Hello everyone and welcome back to Yosemite Valley. Yes, I have already announced that this is coming back now and we having a bit more time in this wonderful project. First of all, thank you so much for the reception of the last episode of The Elephant House. In case you have missed out on that one, uh, I'm gonna link this to the top right now for you guys so you can uh, catch the wonderful Elephant House, which is already part of this build today. Um, and today we are going to build a mare cat habitat, a pretty classical one, a pretty straightforward uh, thing that I built completely out of my mind, um, having some inspiration from zoos I've been to, uh, but nothing in particular, it's kind of bringing this all together. And we are starting our little African area here. So I'm, I'm just going to quickly uh, speak about the fact that the meerkats are obviously not in the game. Uh, and I think, you know, potentially not everyone has uh, caught, on, uh, caught up on, on, on why I'm doing this. Mainly, I decided to um, create myself a little bit of an outlet for creativity by going for habitats that are uh, featuring animals we are not having in-game intentionally. So the next two episodes, uh, this one and the next one, will be two animals that we do not have in the game. And then the third one, which is already done as well, which I think will be next Wednesday released. I'm gonna uh, pre-produce here a little bit right now because I'm planning to go on holiday soon, maybe for a few days. Um, so I'm gonna pre-produce a few bits and pieces here and stretch them out over a few couple of days. But I had a blast. I had a super blast playing this one here. So um, yeah, there's quite a bit of material coming out for you guys, which is kind of cool. And I really hope you guys are appreciating this. And also, uh, since we have so much new, well, not so much, but we have some very important news from Frontier about this uh, skin variations uh, stuff, which is super exciting. And I'm also kind of secretly hoping that there will be something else along the way. I don't know, maybe we will finally see something. It's it's way overdue anyway, so really hoping that um, now finally we get some new content. And I want to be prepared so that I have pre-produced some stuff already in case it, as always, will be exactly when I'm on holiday. Actually, you know, since always in my life, whenever I have holidays, something cool is released. That is story of my life and <laughs> potentially this time as well, I don't know. Um, who knows, but... Um, in case you want to know, I am uh, at the end of August, beginning of September, I might be away for a few days. Um, and this is also uh, where I'm assuming potentially would be an update. But who knows, you know, we have no official info on that yet. But anyways, so um, that said, I want to make sure that I still have a little bit of, uh, yeah, creative input here. And this is... Um, this is really giving me the chance here to do this because I don't need to build anything for in-game animals that I have been building already 10 times. Um, finally, I can do something for a fictional animal that is not in the game yet, but it obviously, you know, is kind of existing in real life. And one thing I wanted to do as well is I wanted to focus a little bit on animals that potentially at one point could be added to the game or at least some similar animals. And I'm just, you know, I'm just guessing that meerkats at some point will be added. You know, if I would be Frontier, they kind of introduced the idea of, of going for the different continents now and having the different continent pa packs or let's say regional packs, I want to call them. And uh, then just adding a bunch of animals from this specific region in. And honestly, if I would go through the different regions we have already in the game in terms of animals... Unfortunately, Africa potentially is one of those areas where most of the animals we would see in a game are already in. That said, I'm, I'm still pretty sure that they are also at some point, they will be going into a kind of uh, zoo essential uh, DLC, I guess. At least that would be my guess that at some point they just do a DLC that is called like Zoo Essentials or whatnot. And then you would potentially get some cool, maybe some different brands of, of shops or whatnot. Maybe a different tour. That would be cool. Some more education. And then these kind of zoo classic animals, you know. Um, as, as I said, just meerkats. And maybe, I don't know how they will tie that in. If we will get aquatic at some point, um, that we also get some different types of penguins and... You know, these kind of typical animals you would see in a, in a game, maybe even some guinea pigs or whatnot. I, I mean, they potentially would be exhibit animals, but who knows? And so um, I'm assuming that this thing for the future might be actually filled. For the moment, I put, uh, uh, to be honest, I put some capuchin monkeys in, uh, which for whatever reason worked. Um, I was a bit confused, but they work and they, they look kind of funny in here because they are so small and it just kind of works. So I, I'll keep them in as long as we... 
as long as it takes until we uh, hopefully get them in the future. But the good thing is I want to, you know, I want to keep this zoo going forward as long as possible, as long as the performance um, is somewhat bearable and as long as um, there is space available, simply put. And uh, the space is the reason why I decided on going uh, a little bit into this direction. Uh, of of making animals that are not in the game yet because I think from the animals that are in game I think I've done mostly all of the animals I wanted to do like there's one animal potentially we need to still do definitely that is the Formosan black bear as kind of an equivalent to the American black bear that's one of these animals we could still put in because that comes close and not sure if we will get the American black bear anyway so that would work definitely and then yeah I guess from from all the animals we have I think now it's actually time to bring it down to, to stuff that we haven't in game yet. I was also thinking of bringing in giraffe and zebras uh, just because there are also zoo favorites and would fit into the um, African area here. So that could potentially happen. But other than that, I'm quite happy with the choice of animals of this zoo. And again, this zoo was always meant to be a bit more realistic and a bit more focused on um, tying that into the story of... Yosemite Valley and what kind of animals would be here so it's not the, the goal to have every animal available in the game here that's definitely not the point. Um, one thing though we could still do is like a reptile house because we basically didn't do that much with uh, exhibit animals whatsoever so that could be something cool and I was planning to do this um, towards the entrance of the zoo actually because there is uh, still one space we haven't filled in and I'm still not really sure what goes there but yeah. Now before we talk a little bit more about this uh, habitat over here, and um, please forgive me, we won't have a tour today, but we will have a tour uh, tomorrow, because tomorrow will be another episode of Yosemite Valley. Isn't that cool? Yeah, this will be also a pretty exciting one. I'm not going to tell which animal it will be, but I can tell you, I'm giving you a little hint, okay? It's also an animal from Africa. It is also quite, I would say, rather small. Um, it's having some funny ears, I guess, that, that that's something that could be said, um, and it ties very nicely into this area here, so this is all I want to give away, um, I love that animal, to be honest, for tomorrow's episode, so um, I hope you guys are looking forward to this, uh, but before we talk about this habitat here, um, I'm, then you also, you, you're also getting a real-time overview, by the way, it, that, that's what I wanted to say, um, today you won't give this Jeez, what a what a struggle here. Um, anyways, I just wanted to quickly point one thing out. You guys know that I just love to live stream. And lately, unfortunately, the live streams became a little bit, um, let's say, less viewed. Um, I think this is the best way to put it. I still enjoy them to the max because I enjoy the interaction with you guys. But also, I really would love to grow the live streaming more and more. And I see that still loads of people from over here are not part of our live streaming crew and there is a particular reason I can't really you know tell you guys too much on here when and where I'm streaming mainly because YouTube doesn't really like to see that I'm, I'm sending people over to the other one however if you guys want to catch me live and I'm streaming at least once a week I'm trying to find a way to uh, you know have two times a week maybe there are some ideas I have in my mind I have to discuss with my wife if we can make this this possible but please if that is somehow something you would love to see make sure to jump to the description down below you will find the link promise me there is a social section and there are all the social links and the second link is the link to the live stream make sure to follow me on that other channel which I'm not allowed to say but you know um, just jump over there Give me a follow and then you'll always be notified when I am live. Also, in case you want to give, get it from the first hand, so to say, just jump into my Discord channel and uh, make sure to subscribe there as well. Well, not subscribe, but make sure to just follow the thread of the live streams. Then you get the notification of it and uh, you're good to go. Anyways, um, also same topic as always. Uh, if you are a constant viewer of my channel and, you know, um, if you're listening right now to the 10 minute mark of the video, you are actually one of those who watch this a bit more and listen to the commentary. In case you're not subscribed, what are you doing? Huh? <laughs> so in case uh, you want to support the channel, uh, I would be very happy if you could subscribe to the channel as well. Um, that would help me out a lot. I still see that there is the majority of people watching is not subscribed to the channel. And I've, I've talked about that multiple times, so I'm, I'm not going to stress that anymore. I just wanted to bring that in the natural flow of this episode. But now I have to jump into what I'm building because that is one of the cool things here. Um, 
I, I, I remember that one of the key things about these Marrakech habitats is the heat. And um, Marrakech are used to live in the desert plains of Africa. And they used to live in a very hot environment. And so this area where they live need to live is also um, very important that it, this is very warm. So what I'm doing over here is a, like, like a heat lamp. Um, I used the heater to just kind of get a, get a size, but then I figured it's too big. So I just kind of built a custom heat lamp here. And the cool bit about this heat lamp is that, um, yeah, you, you can just place that into your habitat and this acts like, like a real heater also game wise, which is kind of cool. And I love the fact like I, I've browsed some images online and I found the Marrakech just all standing in groups, hugging each other below these wonderful uh, heat lamps. That's kind of cool. Like they are like all hugging each other when it's cold outside. And so I figured, you know, that would be actually cool to have this in this game as well. So I was putting a lot of these heat lamps in because I figured that would be super realistic. Um, you know, I'm not sure if Frontiers always, uh, anyways, I'm going to add them at some point. I don't know if they will have the behavior of seeking for some heat stuff or whatnot. Maybe we even get some heat lamps because we at least do have something like that already in the exhibit. So I think that would be rather cool to have. I don't know, but at least if you ask me, I think that would be pretty sick. Um, but yeah, also you can see I was trying to get like uh, a very local um, plant variation in but then again I also tried to tie in some of the more uh, deserty uh, yeah desert deserty African uh, plants that you would expect so some of them would grow here and then I used some of these wonderful uh, potteries here to uh, give them some entrances to the little cave system because obviously we don't really can uh, we, we can't really build a cave system in here but what we can do is kind of pretend as if there was like a little uh, section where they could live and um, just dig deep into. I remember that this was one part of an interview I recently saw. Actually, in fact, the lady designer sent me the link to an, a very old interview. I think it was with Game Radar or Gamers News or whatnot. They had an interview with uh, Pierce Jackson, who's uh, one of the lead programmers of Planet Zoo. And uh, he stated in, in one of these interviews that um, obviously digging is one of the things that... Um, they needed to make a decision on whether it's possible or not and they figured that this is a super hard behavior that they couldn't implement right now simply just because how the engine works and how powerful the computer would need to be like you know technically everything is possible but you always have to kind of uh, balance it to what you think is doable or not and you know considering how the performance of the game is actually I'm, I'm quite confident and he he said the truth that you know if I mean it the terrain is voxel based and you somehow could have made digging possible but I think if we would get uh, Marquettes in this game I'm quite sure that there will be a whole bunch of enrichment items uh, in where they would dig for example maybe you even would get some you know, I think they made a good um, start to it with the uh, termite mold uh, for the uh, giant ant eater so kind of this this thing i would assume we would get some more of these and if you ask me i'm totally fine with that if they still move around freely they can climb they go to heat lamps or whatnot so you know that would be still very sick and very cool um and i, I would be totally totally fine with this but yeah I'm, I'm assuming that they would go that route anyways but here's that little bit of extra info i just found recently and i found really interesting because that kind of explains a bit more why, for example, we don't have uh, these animals in the game. Yet there are some other animals as well that would love to dig and stuff, you know. So um, maybe this is, again, just kind of the zoo essential DLC or whatnot you want to call it. I don't know. I, I just just kind of thinking loud out uh, out loud here. I don't know. Um, yeah, you can see I'm, I'm just also putting some waypoints in here. I haven't had any of those in the zoo yet. We will definitely... Um, use this a bit more often because as the zoo now becomes a lot more big and I'm also willing to upload another version 3.0 very soon of the zoo um, then uh, maybe someone is going to check that out and potentially will need this little uh, signage here because otherwise you potentially get lost in the zoo quite easily um, but yeah so that's it I am uh, very happy with how this all turned out. I decided then to fill in this little gap of the two pathways over here. By the way, this was a little kind of thing I wanted to do to make sure that I have a bit of a better guest flow management. I recently figured that the guest flow management in this game is becoming a lot more important now. I really do um, notice that in my franchise zoos, um, the, the people are 
creating some huge crowds, not really looking at social distancing whatsoever. And you've got to have to work a lot more with uh, the path thing in general and um, maybe some bins and some barriers in between to make them move more clever and in, in a better way. And this is what I try to achieve here with this little viewing in the middle, um, simply because I felt this was a good idea. Um, so the people who want to go to the left will take the left and to want to go to the right, take the right. And so they don't cramp into each other in the middle. Yeah, one last uh, bit here I did is just filled in some uh, black pieces to make sure that this looks a bit more um, as if there's really going into a tunnel because some of them were still having um, some bright kind of colors peeking through, as you can see here. And so I just figured uh, putting these dark things in would make it look even more realistic. Anyhow, so we had getting really close to the end of today's episode there will be a new end screen waiting for you guys and i definitely need your feedback on that one i just wanted to make it a bit more personal with my own face oh, oh my god you know you're gonna see my own face i think it's fine i think you will survive but please let me know if you like the new format and um you know it, it also helps to make sure that I can end the episode a bit more normal and don't always have to repeat all the kind of, uh, let's say, formal stuff uh, with subscribe, like, blah, blah, blah. You know, I, I, you know, I, know it's, I know it's necessary, but somehow I just want to end this episode in style and talk about what we've had today. So today I will use this and say goodbye, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy your free time. And for the European guys, enjoy the heat wave. Go out, um, have some good time, but make also sure to stay safe. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Goodbye. Thank you for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. I really hope you enjoyed it. And um, yeah, I was really happy to have you here. In case you enjoyed it and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to consider subscribing. You can do it via this button here. And if you want to see more, uh, there's some cool other stuff linked here for you. This is suggested for you personally. That's pretty cool. And in case you want to support the channel a tiny bit more, you can do it via this wonderful Hype Camel link over here. I really would appreciate it. And also, big thank you already to all the people who do already support the channel. Really do appreciate that. But now, have a wonderful time, guys and I catch you in the next one.